Here we are in section 5-3 with exercises 13 through 15. Find the missing variable for a parallelogram. Now a parallelogram looks like this and it has a height that is straight up but that's different from the two sides a and b. So the area formula is not one half a times b like a rectangle would be but it's b times h. We're using that vertical height there. So b times h. So let's use that formula and see what we have here. We have 66 equals b which is 5 times h. Oh now we know how to solve this don't we? Yeah it's simplified we're an equation this is great we just need to divide by 5 to get h by itself. Oh happy math land. So h is going to be 66 divided by 5. Let's go ahead and punch that in and turn it into a decimal. 5 goes into 66. 5 goes into 6 one time that's 5. Uh, subtract and we get a 1. Drop the 6 down, 5 goes into 16 three times, 3 times 5 is 15, subtract and we get a 1, let's put a 0 there, drop a 0 down, and we get 13.5 goes into 10 two times evenly, so we're going to have 13.2, so 13.2, and notice we are in inches, and yep, area is in inches squared, height is in inches, and base would be in inches, so 13.2 inches. Okay, number 14. You buy a shirt and pay $1.49 in sales tax. Okay, so that is our tax right there, $1.49. The sales tax rate, that's R, is 6%. That's 0 0.06 as a, as a number. What is the price? We're looking for price. And the formula in the book was tax equals the rate times the price. Yeah, 6% of the price equals $1.49. So if we put that in, we get $1.49 equals 0 0.06 times P. Yeah, 6% of the price would be 149. So we wouldn't times the 6% in the 149 because we, that it was the 6% times the price that got us the 149. So now we divide by 0 0.06, divide by 0 0.06, and what do we get there? Oh, I don't know. That's going to be a, we'll have to do that one by hand. 149 divided by 0 0.06, move the decimal 1, 2, 1, 2, so that is 6 into 149. Okay, 6 goes into 14 twice, 2 times 6 is 12, subtract, we get 29, 6 goes into 29 4 times, 4 times 6 is 24, subtract and we get a 5, better put a 0, a couple of them out there, 6 goes into 50 8 times, 8 times 6 is 48, Subtract and we get a 2, drop the 0 down. 6 goes into 20 three times. It's 18. Subtract and we get a 2, drop another 0. Oh, that's going to continue forever. We got the 20s repeating. So rounding to the nearest cent, uh, 24.833333. That'd round that down to just a 3. 24.83 dollars. That would be the original price. Great. Uh, number 15. Lauren has a cup full of dimes and quarters. So we're going to have a D and we're going to have a Q. The total value of the coins is 580. And there are 10 quarters. So Q is 10. It's good to know. Um, and then how many dimes? That's going to be the variable we're going to go. So let's write that formula. In general, with dimes and quarters, it's going to be 0.1D. That's 10 cents for every dime plus 25 cents for every quarter. Uh, and then we have that is V, so 580, 5.8 equals 0 0.1 times D. We don't know D, so let's leave it like that. And then the quarters is 10 plus 0.25 times 10. Um, all right, simplify it. 0.1 D plus 2.5. And yeah, hey, look, it's simplified. Smiley face here. Because now we're going to subtract the 2.5 and then divide by 0.1. So subtract 2.5, subtract 2.5. We get 3.3 .3 equals 0.1D. Divide by 0.1, divide by 0.1. And uh, D equals, let me see, 3.3 uh, .3 divided by 0.1. Move the decimal, move the decimal, and we have 1. 33 divided by 1. Yep, that's going to be a 33 right there. Now notice in 
if you didn't write a formula, you would have done the exact same thing. You're like, oh, I got $5.80. There are 10 quarters. 10 quarters is $2.50. Subtract from $5.80 and you get $3.30. You're like, oh, how many dimes make $3.30? 33. So that's exactly what we did. Subtracted 2.5 2 and then divided by 0.1. Great.